Oh, let's see. I've been reading the paper all week. Uh... <laughs> oh, actually, actually, there's a controversy going on between two of our guests. I don't know. Controversy would be the best uh, word. Maybe bad feelings between uh, two of our guests, Siskel and Ebert. Now, how many of you know about this? You know? Okay. Yes. Okay. Here's what the deal is. Um, I guess Roger got mad at Cisco because he divulged the surprise ending of the crying game. Okay, so they were reviewing the movie and he did that. Apparently the two exchanged some pretty harsh words. In fact, Ebert was so pissed that when Cisco came to his car that night, Cisco found a Polaroid of Tom Arnold's ass on his windshield. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a rumor uh, is even going around that it turned physical off camera and they had a little fight which they say Roger won uh, <laughs> as a matter of fact we have a graphic of uh, the latest Cisco and Ebert review it's a little different now take a look at your, see look yeah there's <laughs> terrible fight broke out <laughs> yeah. How many actually saw the show? It's aired in some parts of the country, I think. Uh, I saw part of it. I, I tuned in late, ma'am, at the end of the argument, and Ebert was holding up a finger, but it wasn't the thumb, and that's how I knew something was wrong, you know? <laughs> he was real, real mad when I caught it. An anonymous source on the set said that um, it's the worst fight they've actually had, because they usually get along, you know, with a few arguments here and there, but they say this is the worst fight since the time Siskel apparently took Ebert's last milk dud, and that just, oh, they just went crazy that night, up in the balcony, just fighting like crazy. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I made myself laugh. Um, Monologues in one. Yeah. Uh, join me all next week, and my guests will be uh, from the new movie, Cop and a Half, Burt Reynolds, and a young man named Norman Golden II. Talent, a real talent. Um, ugly Kid Joe, uh, comedian Leah Delira. Am I saying it right? Deliria. Deliria. This lady is new, and she's bad. Please check her out. Um, let's see. Who else? Uh, Winona, which I assume is Judd. Okay, let's just hope it's just not a chick named Winona that we let him come on the show. It's a Judd. Thank you. Sinbad in the house. Uh, yes. A lot of people. Uh, Denzel Washington, Wretched Effect, uh, Teddy Riley, Richard Crenna. Uh, uh, oh, the young boy who divorced his parents. Gregory K. will be here. A lot of people with a single initial as a last name. Ice T. will be here. Um, LL Cool J. will be here. Uh, Shelley Long, uh, Elijah Wood, Holly Hunter, it goes on and on. I'm going to the Sears, the Sears. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm not going to the Sears because I can't afford it. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to the Cheers set <laughs> because uh, they're ending, as you know. And I'm going to go down there, take a camera, and we're going to talk to Shelley Long and everybody on the cast. Shelley's coming back, right, for that ending. Uh, it, it's going to be great, so, so check us out next week. My first guest often disagree, but this week it's been in the paper because... Um, it turned into a more intense verbal disagreement, I guess. Um, they'll tell us all about it. They've been all over the news. Please welcome Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert. Uh, well, you know, I, I, I try to do it with jokes um, because we have to laugh to keep from crying, but it's really hard for me to believe in 93, if this thing turns out to be realistic, yeah. that this is going on. You know, I've never really had to tip anyone to get a table at Denny's myself. <laughs> well, I'd like that nice one over by the counter if I could, now, please. But now, now, in seriousness, aren't you married to a black woman? Yes. Okay, so if you take your wife, you might have to. <laughs> uh, now, how much do you think would be the correct tip for a table at Denny's? I, I'm not sure. I think you should just sizzler it. 
down the street. Um, no, it's just very sad. Very sad. I know it is, but yeah. let's talk about you guys because I hate to see you fight. Tell them how it happened first for those who haven't seen the program. Well, why don't I start because oh. I'm, I'm the accused. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, on our show, which is called If We Pick the Winners, it's an hour show devoted to um, who we would vote for if we had a ballot. We don't right. have ballots, but we make our arguments of who we would vote for, and we go through the major categories. And in the Best Supporting Actor category, I felt that Jay Davidson did the best job. And I felt I had to explain why he did the best job, better mm -hmm. than the other four actors. This wasn't reviewing the movie. Right. This was comparing actors' work. And so I issued a warning, just like you've read in newspapers and Time magazine, mm -hmm. when people are talking about this movie, The Crying Game, in detail, they issue a warning, and mm -hmm. then they reveal the secret, one of the secrets in the film, not mm -hmm. the ending, as you said, one of the secrets, yeah. sort of yeah. two-thirds of the way through. And so I did that, and we even put a crawl across the bottom of the screen saying, and this is sort of unprecedented on a television show, if you don't want to know, turn the volume down, and then turn the volume up, it's over. And he went ballistic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, this is like Rashomon. You've heard Gene's uh, theory about it. The idea of the crawl came up after the show was over, after my protest. No, the not show. the verbal crawl, not the verbal statement. That was in the thing script. Is a, okay, the verbal so, statement. Okay, now, I didn't know that at the time. Let's get him up. get him up. get ugly. Who knows? I don't want anybody to get knuckle bruises. See, uh, I... Uh, we don't rehearse our show, and I had no idea what he was going to say, so he says, now I'm going to have to give away the secret. I did not say that. I, I said... want to warn you, he's putting on the gloves, man. <laughs> <laughs> he said something about a turn down, and I said, I hope you're not going to give away the secret. Because, you see, the theory that you can turn down the sound is great if you happen to have... A volume control on your set. A volume control you know, <laughs> in your hand. But what if you're, you know, what if you're watching in bed, or what if you're in an airport, or in a college dorm or something? Oh, my God, I, just awful. Or what if you're in Denny's? Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, it's very funny. Okay, it's very funny. They're not but watching Gene, different Gene, strokes at Denny's, that's for sure. Do you have the slightest sympathy? Do you have, it's almost enough to make you wish you worked for Jack in the Box, I guess. But oh, my. Listen. Wait, wait. Back in the something. Do you do you have the slightest sympathy? You, he won't. He doesn't want it. He wants to wisecrack instead of answering this question. Do you okay. have the slightest sympathy yes. for someone who, because of your decision, found out about the secret in that movie and didn't want to? Uh, slight. But slight. I warned him. What I warned him. Okay. I warned him. Yeah. Just, just for example, I feel badly in a newspaper and in your newspaper where they ran similar articles and they went ahead and read anyway. I feel sorry for them. I will tell you this. I've mm. seen The Crying Game twice, obviously knowing what was going on the second time, and it's a fabulous film and I encourage people to see it if they even know what's going on. It's a great film and I'm rooting yeah. for it to win the Oscar well, knockoff. In the heat unforgiven. Of, in the heat of, of taping this show, which was live before an audience, I had no mm. idea he was going to do this. And I really felt that he shouldn't. Okay, you know, but, a lot uh, of people say that it's a good movie and it really doesn't matter if you know the secret. Uh, how oh, do you feel I about that? I think it does. I, you know, I saw the film at the Telluride Film Festival last August. Mm -hmm. And when I went to see it again, the t time that Gene saw it the first time, mm -hmm. I don't really think Gene would have thanked me if on the way into the screening room I'd said, by the way, Gene, there's just uh, I want to prepare you for something here uh, before you go in to see the movie, and then told him the secret. I don't think he would have been too thrilled. But that isn't what I did. If you, the equivalent there would have been if you had said to me, Gene, Gene, before you walk, let me finish, before you walk into the movie, I'm going to tell you the secret, I'm not going to warn you. If you had warned me, I would have walked out of Gene, the room. Let me ask I you, gave a warning, it's perfectly legitimate. Let me ask you... <laughs> let me ask you uh, uh, what is probably going to turn out to be a hypothetical question. Do you think you are a good enough film critic that you could say what you needed to say without spoiling people's fun? No. You're not? No. He's the only one in the country who can make that statement. No. Every other critic in the country reviewed this movie without giving away uh, the secret. As I pointed out, this, and I did so in my review, but this was not a review. This was a comparison between the actor's role. And what is really amazing, um, if you watch this special, is that Roger actually disagrees with me and thinks that Al Pacino did a better job in Glen Gary, Glen Ross than uh, Jay Richardson in The Crying Game. It's incredible to me, so I had to make my case. Well, I'm glad I didn't to stop you from making your I'm case. I'm glad that you're not too old to be occasionally surprised by my wonderful thought processes. Uh, you, my, my goal, my goal, I'm gonna tell you, Arsenio, my goal in this Oscar uh, weekend is to get a hold of Al Pacino and ask him directly if he thinks that Jay Richardson did a better job in The Crying Game than he did in Glen Gary Glen Ross, and I bet you Al Pacino is enough of a man to say Jay Richardson had the more complicated, more difficult role. He deserves the Oscar more than I do. 
Well, in that case, Al Pacino would be wrong. <laughs> okay, can I, can I, <laughs> Mr. Ebert, can, can I ask you another question? Uh, there have been people who have accused this of being hype, something you all planned. Do you really hate each other? How much of it is hype? So on and so forth. We do not hate each other. And actually, it got completely out of hand. The thing that I can't understand is, first of all, the phone started to ring. All of the country people are calling. Did we have a physical fight? I don't know where that got started. I have yeah. no idea. I can't run fast enough to catch Gene, so we could never have a fight. Maybe, you know, if I... With those long legs, and, you know, you ought to see him run, you know. It's very hard to fight with him. <laughs> I think the audience is trying to start a fight. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I, okay, joking, joking aside, I think the bottom line is that we both took this seriously and because we're, we're critics, and uh, it's part of what we do. I felt he shouldn't have. He felt that he should. He has his defense, and I have my uh, point of view. And, and uh, we took it seriously, but it didn't get into to something no. that was personal. I will say that if you follow if you follow the Rogers, same one I use on the show, right? Oh. Here. <laughs> if you follow Rogers' argument, what he was really saying is that if you're a journalist and you appear on television, you can't really discuss in detail the crime game, even if you warn people that you're going to. And that is an indefensible position as a journalist. That I could really get into that because I, I you know, <laughs> okay, we, we, you know what? We should probably take a commercial and come back and I mean, we could do this all night, but we got to talk about okay, film. Let's talk about something else because yeah. Gene is wrong, but it would take all night to. Uh, we'll be right back. We'll be right back. <laughs> Sitting with Mr. Ebert and Mr. Siskel. Uh, let's talk about this big thing coming up for you guys. Uh, best picture, what do you think? I think Clint Eastwood is going to go home a very happy man on Monday. I think he'll probably win for best picture and best director. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes um, who you think will win and who you would like to win is different. That's right. How about this case? Well, Unforgiven was in my list of the 10 best films of the year, but higher on the list was Howard's End, and also higher on the list was Crying Game. So it would be my third choice among the nominated films. Yeah. What do you think about the whole Spike Lee situation? Uh, do you think him not being a Hollywood insider or... Well, I, think, I think there, he does a very good job in, his, uh, in, in an arousing interest in his film for the man on the street, the customer. Mm -hmm. But I think he also manages to offend the powers in the studio. And frankly, I don't think he cares that much about them. He's trying to manipulate them to get a bigger budget mm -hmm. and to get a bigger advertising budget. Now, when it comes time to vote for him, if you've been called a de facto racist, in that if it were a white film, you would have spent more money on it. And you would, if it were a white film, you would have put more money in your advertising budget. And he may be right. But if you call people that, then expect them to vote for you, well, that's ridiculous. And he knows that. And he said at the Berlin Film Festival, he said, they don't like me, I don't like them. So it's not a surprise that he wasn't nominated. But people like Denzel Washington's performance enough. And uh, I hope, uh, well, frankly, he had the toughest role of any of the actors. Uh, and uh, I hope he wins. Okay. I do, too. You know, um... I really think that uh, it's a shame that Malcolm X was penalized, perhaps, because of uh, some of the feeling about Spike, because I feel that it was the best film that made last year, and it was certainly miles better uh, than A Few Good Men, which, for all of its good technical qualities, uh, is the kind of film that Hollywood has made a thousand times. It's a more or less formula courtroom picture. Yeah. Um, but Rob Reiner, I thought, did a great job. What do you think? Well, with of that cast, Arsene, I mean, it would be pretty hard. Not, I mean, that's, there, there's, you got yeah, some that big engines there. That could have been there. your directing debut, and uh, you would have done a great job. <laughs> yeah, I really think, I, I, it was, you know, too. based on yeah. a play, based on a play, so there really wasn't that much work to be done. Maybe in getting the cast, I'm told that Rob Reiner had some influence in getting that cast together, but uh, in terms of direction, I don't think that was anything special. Reiner is a terrific director. I love Prince's Bride, one of his films that really didn't do that well at the box office, and I like most of his pictures. How about Best Actress? Well, I think the uh, winner is going to be um, Emma Thompson from Howard's End, and uh, I would endorse that this, as a choice. This falls under the Academy's rule that every year at least one major award has to go to somebody with a British passport. And for the last three years, they've given Best Actor to uh, somebody from Britain or Byron's, 
Yeah. And uh, this year, I think it will go to Emma Thompson. I agree with Jean. She has a very complicated role to play, and she uh, plays uh, many different colors in that role. And uh, you're always questioning her behavior. She doubts herself. You don't see lead characters in movies doubt themselves as much as she does in the film. And uh, it's very complicated. She does a great job. So even at the end of that picture, you can even debate why, what, why she does what she does. Mm -hmm. There aren't that many quality scripts written in this town for women. So when we come to this time of the year, it, it's very complicated. You know, I was talking this morning to Mary Stewart Masterson, a very good young actress, who was complaining that frequently when she looks at scripts, it gets to the point where they're describing not the character, but the body. You know, mm. her breasts, her hair, uh, her thighs. And she said, I'm reading this script and I realize it's my breasts, my hair, my thighs. And then when you go in uh, for the audition, you're like, you're supposed to seduce the director or seduce the producer, at least symbolically, not physically. And then if you can seduce them, you can seduce an audience and you'll get the role. And she's like most actresses, she's very uncomfortable with that. She would rather be considered as a person than as... And, and at a certain point in a sex scene, you're not really looking at an actress anymore. You're looking at a body. And uh, that's too bad. On our show this weekend, I make the comment, because the Oscars uh, telecast Monday night is devoted to the year of the woman. When, yeah. Of all years, yeah. so uh -huh. devoted. Uh, it's a PR job. The year right? of the missing woman. Yeah. Should have been. The, uh, <laughs> but I make the statement that I don't think that the men out here in power like women. And, I, and I, in two ways, either personally, possibly, but certainly, financially, uh, they don't think they can make money off of women. And I'll give you an example. Right now in the headlines uh, in the uh, L.A. Times today, a movie about a, um, uh, an attorney, which was going to star Gina Davis, and also Jodie Foster had shown interest in it, has just been rewritten to star Steven Seagal when he showed interest in the film. And this is from a producer, Arnold Coppelson, mm -hmm. who is a wonderful producer. He produced uh, Platoon, I believe, Oscar winner, and they're following this the is, money. They just made a few slight changes in the script. He's now the only attorney who carries his own flamethrower. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do you think you Gina think Davis, just, I mean, we're not talking about marginal actors here. Gina Davis, who's just in a, a league of their own, a big hit, a Jodie Foster, and a $100 million smash, Silence of the Lambs, and it's going for the big money. Uh, and I well, like that, You uh, know, when you have a woman in a picture, it's a relationship picture, and then it gets complicated. If you have a guy and it's an action picture, you can send it overseas. It can make a lot of money in foreign markets because there's not a lot of dialogue. And I think it's easier to write those pictures than to write pictures that are about people. And you like it or not, when you have women in the situation, it's about people. And when you have guys, it can be about action. Yeah. I also think that the audience bears some responsibility. I don't think it's a misperception that say that um, uh, guys have less of an interest in women than women have an interest in guys in the movies. And I think that is deep set, and I think that the audience bears some responsibility, too. Will the success of certain films this year affect what's made next year? Like, Miramax is having all this success, all these small movies doing well. Well, you know, uh, Howard's End, which has been a hit from the very beginning of, uh, of 1992, uh, uh, inspired Disney to, to uh, sign up uh, Merchant and Ivory to a three-picture deal. And I think they want to make a few pictures like Merchant and Ivory are known for. Mm -hmm. and I think some other studios will try to do that, too. But in the, in the big picture, it's going to be Steven Seagal and Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, science fiction and special effects, because those are the pictures that can make $200 million. In domestically and another 200 million internationally. We're getting into a much more international business, and men action films translate better across the water than do the relationship pictures. Yeah. Thank you guys for coming by. Um, it's now, a pleasure. Now you want them to probably watch your coverage. Uh, yeah, it's going to be playing all over the country at various times uh, this weekend. You have to look in your local TV listings for the time and station. It's okay. called okay. if we if we pick the winners. In other words, if we were the Academy, which I think personally would be an excellent idea. <laughs> oh, you actually got some votes on that. <laughs> yes. and, and don't fight, because we like you guys hey, together, and we don't want a divorce. Oh, yeah. Another marriage. Another marriage. <laughs> Sister Levine, we'll be back. Here.